in the in, in the uh, uh, Philippine coffee industry roadmap 2017 to 2022, um, it basically explains uh, where we are, where do we want to go, and how do we get there. Uh, discusses a lot about how Arabica has really uh, increased in terms of quality, especially in the Benguet area, for example. The current sufficiency is around about 47% at the moment. The government's plan is to take this to 160%. So how do you see that we can achieve this particular goal, for example? We started working together with the agriculture when, when that roadmap came out in March 2017 when it was signed by the two secretaries and witnessed by the process again. And uh, we had an agreement then when that was just crafted because DTI was part of the crafting that it's, it's a work in progress and therefore we need to, to review regularly how far we are going. But uh, maybe because of the changes of leadership in the Department of Agriculture, yes. we were not able to do that because it's the, the main agency which initiated the roadmap is the Department of Agriculture and we came in at the later part of uh, when it was already about 85% complete for the processing and marketing. So uh, it's really a big challenge for us to be able to comply with the volume requirement because the, the the battle there is really the volume. How can we move 360 degrees or more so we can follow the roadmap uh, target of additional hectares, target of rejuvenation, target of improving the coffee. So I would say that uh, we are not yet in that level as as defined in the roadmap. But I do understand. I'm also. Uh, happy to learn uh, that the new secretary of DA, Secretary William Dar, was telling to USEC Lovinia as the USEC of the high value graphs that there's now a need to review, uh, of which DTI has been asking before. You might be aware that the government has been uh, sponsoring the roadmap, the Philippine Coffee uh, Roadmap 2017 to 2022, mm -hmm. which essentially outlines and uh, analyzes the whole coffee industry in the Philippines. Where do you see the role of the Philippine Coffee Board in it? And how do you fit in to the whole strategy of reviving the coffee industry in the Philippines? The Philippine Coffee Board is a non-stock, non-profit, private sector-led organization. And for the last 18 years, we have been at it promoting Philippine coffee. Of course, before uh, encouraging propagation, we have to show the people that the market is uh, aware that there is a category, if you will, that's Philippine coffee. Being conscious of what am I drinking? You know, what, what is this? And then so we wrote the tide, the Philippine Coffee Board, every October, give away coffee, tell them that it's this comes from Cavite, Kalinga, Davao, Sulu, Palawan, Bohol. And they were like, oh my gosh, I didn't know we grew coffee. Yes, we do. We used to export, the fourth largest exporter in the world in the late 1880s during the Spanish period. And I think the government is trying very hard to revive that. And uh, if you look at the uh, roadmap itself, the, the goal is very ambitious. I don't know if it's realistic. They want to achieve uh, from what we have now, currently. They're trying to increase that in 2022. What needs to change? I think we need to do a lot of due diligence in terms of really immersing ourselves on what is happening in the farms and uh, when I say immersing ourselves in the farm, the situation in the north for example is very different from what is happening in Mindanao and whatever is the requirement or the needs of the farmers in the north is very much different from that of the people from Mindanao. So it's not like it's a common field that 
you know, we, we give to everybody to solve the problem. Financially, economically, certain regions will have different requirements. And I'm sure the roadmap will be addressing that. But I think the due diligence of getting back to the basics of what kind of machine we should be providing farmers. Is it a roaster or a pulper? Those kind of things. We need to be able to change that. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Philippines from number three down to 27 in world production. And that 97% of the coffee farming in the Philippines are small landholders, no access to capital and technology and market. Do you agree with that statement? Well, yes and no. There are a lot of problems faced by the farmers themselves. Not only the farmers, but the consumers. Consumers have been slowly uh, been uh, more aware of what Filipino coffee is. Uh, everybody's talking about Filipino coffee. so. The problem lies therein where there should be integrity in the value chain of coffee. There should be uh, traceability. So when we talk about traceability and integrity, you go down to the tools, you go down to the ground. And you always connect the ground because of the four parts of coffee up to the consumption, they are all connected. If you're true to your value chain, your value chain will be strong and solid and sustainable. Can you tell us the background of Bacalfa? Ang Bacalfa was started on May 26, 2013. We started at 20 coffee farmers. Mm -hmm. You have about 400 hectares. Yes, we have hectares of coffee. Hectares of coffee farm. And it's all Arabica, correct? Mm -hmm. Arabica, Katimor Arabica. A lot of recognition that you got when you went to Boston. <laughs> and you, you, you basically represented the Philippines. Yes, sir. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Out of 13,000, Bakofa was chosen. Yes, sir. And that is really something that we should be proud of. Mm -hmm. And we still produce. want and produce the best coffee in the world. Yes, sir. How do you encourage the young people to take up coffee farming? We have uh, something called the uh, project. We have many projects here in Akogbak. And that's one of the uh, goals of our cooperative to be just like Vietnam in the future. That we are, we really need the help of our young people. And so now the cooperative uh, is uh, encouraging all these uh, uh, young people, all the farmers' sons and daughters, uh, is coming here to at least uh, see the coffee industry and see uh, how can the cooperative make uh, business out of coffee. So <clears throat> at least the cooperative has, uh, the marketing of the cooperative actually evolves from seeds until cups. Mm -hmm. And that we involve all the young people in the processing in the secondary processing so that they can see that there is money in coffee. As you know, there are four sections of um, the coffee, the global coffee value chain. Mm. So in order to achieve your goal, you need to be part of these four sections, mm. not only as a passionate effort to do the coffee, but also to make it more profitable. So how would you achieve this? Um, we really want to make, uh, from the start, we want to nurture our environment. If, we, if our farm is full of trees and hasn't been planted yet, so we want to retain the atmosphere of the bird, being bird friendly mm -hmm. and natural farming practices. Mm -hmm. And then the sustainability being that it can still survive even years after when my children take over. So it's heritage. Yes, yeah, so it's heritage. To... It will take at least probably 30 years to, for our new coffee plants to acclimatize. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to uh, be able to sustain uh, the soil. Well, what is the concept of Calzada as a company, for example? I mean, how, how do you um, compromise profit and also social responsibility? Yeah, well, when we started this, we wanted to be 
sustainable enough so we can at least pay ourselves. We started this as a passion project. Um, Carmel was doing her master's thesis, I was doing mine. And so this was kind of like our side project. And um, in the beginning, we were thinking, okay, we would establish this and then we would hand it off to someone who would like operate this um, full time. But then we got stuck. You got addicted. <laughs> also, <laughs> if I can put it that way. <laughs> yes, uh, in a way. And also, yeah. like, the more you learn, the more yes. you realize you don't know anything yes, yes, so you're yes. like okay i need to know this the more you know the less you know <laughs> yes exactly well six years later we're still here um but also right now the cost of production is so high right why, why do you think it's so high um, there's a, relatively it's high it's it? very high well, relatively higher than in other origins one is because i mean it's it's as you said it's backward farming um, the farmers are only producing so little, and then they are used to old uh, crop old management. Waste. Yes, and so the yield or the productivity of the trees are not at the optimum. Mm -hmm. um, and so instead of them, you know, making five times more in produce, they're only making so little because they're so used to that old practice. Sometimes there's a massive land conversion of uh, farmlands to real estate. There's a shifting to other crops as well because you need probably three to five years in order to yes. get the return of investment in coffee. There's also a lack of equipment, for example, and technology and, uh, and post-harvest facilities where the farmers are able to at least focus on the planting but with the assistance from government in all those infrastructure that can support the coffee industry itself. What do you think should the government should do in order to alleviate some of the hardships that the farmers are suffering at the moment? Um, uh, we have uh, several options. I think number one is uh, the government should provide quality planting materials. The second is on uh, improving the processing uh, facilities and knowledge of the farmers. So, I would say planting materials, quality planting materials, uh, technology and facility on processing, of, uh, especially or specifically on this uh, Barako type and on the marketing support of uh, Barako Kopi. As you know, uh, in Vietnam, it's a the coffee industry is a research-oriented sustainable coffee production, and, and and coffee breeding is essential. Uh, and what they do is their attitude is what they call the ICM, which is an integrated crop management, which means that the government subsidizes the coffee industry. They spend and give a lot of money to the farmers organize the infrastructure in terms of irrigation and fertilization. Why can't we do that in this country? Uh, that's one of the things that the farmers are asking me. And I tell them directly, your attitude. The attitude of our farmers. Of course, we know that Vietnam, that's why we are all surprised, right? After the Vietnam War, Vietnam was not in the coffee map, but they became number two. Why? Because we interviewed the farmer there. And it's really, as you said, it is subsidized. The, the, uh, the, the, the send technicians to the send their scientists to learn from all over the world, and then they come back, they get the analysis, and then they will now recommend what kind of crop is planted there. And then, of course, as I said, the attitude. One of the things that um, I've realized is that although you've been abroad, you've been to a lot of coffee shops in Europe, in the USA, etc., you still believe in homegrown spirit. What, what makes the Philippines um, a, a place where the coffee industry should thrive? Both showcases and highlights Philippine coffee. And I believe that we have, if we have the right, uh, if we have, if we put all our acts together, the Philippines will become a major coffee player in the world. So if you look back a hundred years ago, yes. the Philippines was the number four yeah. producer of coffee in the world. Yeah. And a hundred years later, 
where we're not even in the top 20. Anymore. Yes, that's right. So, and unique, Philippines is also unique. It's a country where all four variants are grown. It's a country where supply or, or demand is outweighs supply. So we don't even have to import uh, export our coffee. Mm -hmm. So and so um, that's how that's why I, that's why I want to bring it back to global stage. I just want to make I just want one of my visions to make sure that the Philippines get back on the coffee map. Right. right? So I believe in the quality in the coffee. And then part of the reason why we're not in the map is because we don't have the supply. Thank you.